Good Wednesday afternoon, everyone. It's David Schlothauer here with another detailed weather forecast. In today's video, another big storm system is going to trigger another threat for severe weather tomorrow across the Ozarks in the Deep South with a threat for some tornadoes, large hail, and damaging winds. So in this update, we're going to break down all those details. So first things first, here's a look at the latest day two categorical outlook from the Storm Prediction Center, and they have maintained a slight risk of severe weather pretty much in the same areas that have already gotten hit way too much so far this spring season of severe weather. And this includes for central, eastern Arkansas, western Tennessee, northern Mississippi, northern Alabama, north, western portion there of Georgia, there is your slight risk of severe weather. But the good news about this is there is a very low chance of tornadoes, but still a 2% chance is a risk of tornadoes in the Memphis, Nashville, Tennessee area in Northern Alabama, and Northern Mississippi. So just keep in mind that there is a risk for tornadoes tomorrow, but it's not slight risk driven. The slight risk is driven mainly by a hail threat, and you can see that here in the yellow, anywhere from, say, Little Rock, Arkansas, all the way into western Tennessee, northern Mississippi, northern Alabama, is where you have the best chances of the largest hail. But up here, too, or surrounding the slight risk, we have it into southern Indiana, southern Ohio, and southern Illinois, and southeastern Missouri, such as, say, um, if you are in St. Louis, there is a 5% risk for large hail. We could see hailstones up to about an inch or two in diameter, so enough to cause some destruction. Along to go with that, we have a wind threat too out of this, especially again for northern Mississippi, Alabama, and northwestern Georgia and southern Tennessee is where we have that slight risk driven for damaging winds. So now, with that being said, here's a look at our very latest 12ZHRRR model, which stands for High Resolution Rapid Refresh Model. It's a meso model that many forecasters use in a short-term range forecast. So when we look at this here on the composite reflectivity forecast, the simulated radar forecast, in other words, on what what the HRRR is picking up on in the in, with time and what we're seeing here is some showers maybe a thunderstorm developing as early as about one or two in the afternoon over st louis missouri if you are in say portions of tennessee you have some stratiform shower activity maybe an embedded thunderstorm within that but nothing too severe nonetheless but as we go forward in time here, by about, say, 2 to 3 in the afternoon, right after your lunchtime, nearing your evening commute, we are going to see storms popping up here, initializing along a boundary, even a cold frontal boundary that drapes itself across most of Arkansas, southern Missouri, into, say, the Ozarks. And along that boundary, we're going to see some discrete supercells develop, and some of these could contain some large hail possibly about an inch or more in diameter. We're also looking at um, some showers and thunderstorms over here across St. Louis, Missouri. Again, these do not look very intense, which is why the SPC has maintained a marginal risk over the St. Louis, Missouri, a level one out of five. Really nothing to be concerned about at all. No tornado threat, just some large hail, maybe some storms to kind of keep an eye on for. May they get a little severe from time to time tomorrow. And then by the evening commute, all right, a lot of you are going to be traveling home from work. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of these cluster of storms starting as supercells clustering into groups like this. And again, the risk for quarter size hail, maybe locally larger, since we're going to have enough energy for these storms to use up, is going to be a thing to watch. And we have some Boeing segments, which could contain some gusty winds with some of these thunderstorms and then more showers and thunderstorms popping up throughout the day over st louis missouri springfield illinois into poria those areas gonna see some showers and storms and then they continue to kind of organize a little bit as we go into the late portion of the evening commute on your for a uh, thursday into your friday which again this is for tomorrow folks for thursday mainly we're looking at that greater threat of severe weather and we have this boeing segment right here this could contain maybe a tornado some gusty winds enough to bring down trees and power lines and some larger hail but that's really the extent 
of that slight risk. And then this thing is out of here and we're looking at a lot quieter weather, although that storm system is going to continue across the northeast. So now when we take a look or when since we looked at our Doppler radar forecast, take a look at about the ingredients coming together for this. We're going to be looking at some bulk shear and you all are saying, whoa, 75 knots of bulk shear. That is significant. The good news about this is a lot of the shear vectors here are pretty much throughout the deep layer of the atmosphere. So we start seeing winds from the west-northwest at the surface, and we go up higher up in the atmosphere. We end up seeing west-northwest and northwesterly flow, which means not a whole lot of directional shear out of these storms tomorrow. Instead, we're going to be looking at more speed shear than anything. And right now, most models do indicate we're going to see anywhere between 60 to about 80 knots of deep layer shear, but mainly above the three kilometer layer, which is not really conducive for significant tornadoes by any means, but it is conducive for large hail. And that is why we're going to see some big hailstones out of these storms tomorrow. On top of that, we have enough energy for these thunderstorms. Thunderstorm juice is what I call it. And right now, we're looking at anywhere between about a thousand joules up to about 1500 joules per kilogram of cape or convective available potential energy throughout the Ozarks. And that is why as we go throughout the day tomorrow, you may not start off as seeing a lot of whole lot of energy, but as we get that surface heating and destabilization, we end up getting a lot of higher convective allowing potential energy numbers out of this. And that's why some of these storms could be um, big enough to cause larger hailstones. Now, when looking at the moisture, moisture is not very rich at all. We're not seeing dew points in the 70s tomorrow. Instead, <coughs> excuse me, instead, we're going to see dew points in the upper 50s to lower 60s, where we do have a little bit of a reservoir here of upper 50 dew points stretching across northern Mississippi and the Little Rock, Arkansas, is the extent of all of this. And then that storm pushes its way south. And then much drier air will follow with dew points back in the upper 30s to low to mid 40s. So now, since we talked about our severe weather for tomorrow, which is a bit on the concerning side for the Ozarks and for portions of the Deep South, we're going to also be a little concerned now for some snow. This is going to be a pretty impactful storm system, folks, for Thursday all the way through Saturday and even into Sunday. So yeah, your weekend is going to be impacted, unfortunately, for the Northeast. So let's look here at the European model. This is the ECMWF 12Z output. In fact, this is still rendering as I am making this video. So this is fresh off the press. And as we move this forward, we can see, yes, there is some late season snowfall for the extreme Northeast. In fact, let's actually zoom in on the Northeastern sector here, because this is where, yes, there is going to be a little bit of snowfall for portions, say, if you are in Albany, New York, if you're even in Syracuse, you might get a little bit of a flurry out there. If you're in northern New Jersey, yeah, a little bit of early morning snow for your Saturday. So, yes, if you're planning to walk the dog, just consider that, yeah, you're going to get some April snow showers, believe it or not, with this. Even some rain and snow in the mix here. That's what this purple is. And then this kind of moves offshore and... You're looking pretty good actually for Sunday um, and then more storms after that to follow by Tuesday. Now, when we quickly look at the mid-range forecast through at least the next seven days here, yeah, severe weather is going to take a pretty long hiatus after tomorrow, which is really great to hear. Actually, well, Saturday is going to marginal for North Carolina, but that's like right along the coast where there's a marginal risk of severe weather that could get upgraded in later outlooks. But right now, it doesn't look to be too significant for the time being. Now, what we're going to need to keep an eye on for is next week. Something that just kind of popped up under the radar is this little system right here in the Midwest, such as Missouri into Kansas. Right now, this is on the cold side of the boundary where we do have northerly flow. So, more likely, this is going to be more stratiform showers, but we could have some elevated nature convection with this as this propagates its way very quickly into the northeast by Monday afternoon into Tuesday. 
And then as we go forward in time, really not a whole lot to be concerned about, at least through the middle of April here. Now, as we go beyond the middle of April, we might start getting return flow from this high pressure where we get moisture off the Gulf of America, infecting northward across the high plains. We get a favorable type jet stream pattern that comes through. We could start seeing more severe weather events. But right now, extremely low confidence of that occurring. Now, I want to be clear, we're not, there's not much in the way of a signal now that warrants me to say, oh, we're going to have another big severe weather event coming up by the middle or the end of April. Doesn't look like it right now at this time. In fact, if we look at the next 10 days, all we're going to have is a passing system across the Northeast. Even if that happens, this would be the 18th of April. And as we look out to 10 days, still looking really quiet. So for the next 10 days, next 10 days, outside of tomorrow's slight risk, we're looking pretty good. Now, if you found this video really helpful, detailed, and informative, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel to get latest updates here on severe weather, winter storms, hurricanes. I'm here all season long, keeping you all updated here on the YouTube channel with any threatening weather coming your way. Also hit the bell notification icon to get all alerts. Okay, so every time I go live or every time I upload, make sure you hit that bell notification icon and also hit the thumbs up button if you did enjoy today's video. Leave a like. Oh, I just said that. And also leave a comment in the section below this video. And lastly, if you're interested in joining the Weather Force Discord server, there is a link in the description below this video. It is 100% free to join today, folks. No cost whatsoever. Click the link below to join the Weather Force Discord server today. This is another way where I can interact with you all there instead of just on YouTube live streams or in chat or on the comment section. That's another way where we could hang out together, play games, talk, and get to know each other. So if you're interested in joining the Weather Force Discord server, there's a link to below this video. But anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll be back with you more tomorrow with a live streaming coverage on the slight risk of severe weather.